All right, welcome to chapter three. This is the lecture for the new genetics. In this chapter, what will you learn? Genetically, how is each zygote unique? How are twins different from other siblings? Who is likely to carry genes that they do not know they have? And why are far more abnormal zygotes created than abnormal babies born? All right, there are lessons from genetics. Genetics affect everything. Nurture always matters. Gene expression depends partly on the social context as a person develops. And the genome provides gene instructions that create individual, species-specific membership. 99% of any person's base pairs are identical to those of any other person. All right, a quick review. All living things are composed of cells. Each cell manufactures certain proteins according to a code of instructions stored by molecules of DNA. Coding DNA molecules are on a chromosome. DNA, also deoxyribonucleic acid, is the chemical composition of the molecules that contain the genes, which are the chemical instructions for cells to manufacture various proteins. A chromosome is one of the 46 molecules of DNA in 23 pairs that virtually every cell of the human body contains and that, together, contain all the genes. Other species have more or fewer chromosomes. All living things are composed of cells that promote growth and sustain life according to instructions in their molecules of DNA. DNA, a molecule that contains the chemical instructions for cells to manufacture various proteins and promotes the growth and sustains life. Chromosomes are molecules of DNA and consist 46 pairs arranged, or 46 chromosomes arranged in 26, 23 pairs. All right, continuing with the genetic code. 46 to 21,000 to 3 billion. There are 23 chromosome pairs, making 46 organized into genes. There are 21,000 genes that are directly specific protein formation from 20 amino acids. And there are 3 billion base pairs of four chemicals. Four chemicals are adenine paired with thymine, and guanine paired with cytosine, the letters A, T, G, C. How proteins are made. The genes on the chromosomes and the nucleus of each cell instruct the cell to manufacture the proteins needed to sustain life and development. The code for the protein is a particular combination of the four letters, T, A, G, C. Different sense begin with alleles, some of which reflect transpositions, deletions, or repetitions of those three billion base pairs. Single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNP, gene is a variation in just one part of the code. Two, three, or more versions, and may be inconsequential or destructive. The different variations are what makes us all look different and unique. Many genes are identical for every human being, and some genes vary slightly in their codes from one person to another. Just mention the word allele. This is a variation that makes a gene different in some way from other genes for the same characteristics. Many genes never vary, and others have several possible alleles. The genome involves a full set of genes that are the instructions to make an individual member of a certain species. In other words, it's the blueprints. More about the genes in a process called methylation. RNA and DNA alter genetic instructions in a variety of ways. RNA regulates and transcribes genetic instructions 
turning some genes and alleles on or off. And epigenetics is the study of how environmental factors affect genes and genetic expression. Going on with the genetic code, many genes are identical for every human being and some slightly vary. This is called genetic diversity and it distinguishes each person. It allows the human species to adapt to the pressures of the environment as well. And there's also something called the microbiome. This is all of the microbes, bacterial, viruses, fungi, archaea, and yeast, living within every party, part of the body, also known as germs. Now we're going to cover sibling differences. Something involved in that is called gametes. These are reproductive cells, sperm and ova, consisting of 23 chromosomes. There's a zygote. This is two gametes, sperm and ovum, combine to produce a new individual with 23 chromosomes from each parent. And the copy number variations. Genes with various repeats or detections of base pairs. This may be inconsequential, lethal, or something in between. This is a computer illustration of a small segment of one gene. Even a small difference in one gene can cause major changes in a person's phenotype. Humans usually possess 46 chromosomes. There are 44 autosomes and two sex chromosomes. It is called homo homozygous if it is the same zygote and the genes are the same or heterozygous, one parent has an allele or slight difference. The 23rd pair, the chromosome pair in humans that determines sex. The other 22 pairs are autosomes, inherited equally by males and females. So one uh, such pair is called XX. This is the 23rd chromosome pair that consists of two X-shaped chromosomes, one, from, one each from the mother and the father and XX zygotes become females. For the 23rd chromosome pair that consists of an X-shaped chromosome from the mother and a Y-shaped chromosome from the father, creates the XY zygote, and those become males. <clears throat> the sex of the offspring depends on whether the father's Y sperm or X sperm fertilizes the ovum. All right, and determining a zygote sex, any given couple can produce four possible combinations of sex chromosomes. Two lead to female children and two lead to male children. In terms of future person's sex, it does not matter which of the mother's ex exes the zygote inherited. All that matters is whether the father's Y sperm or X sperm fertilizes the ovum. However, for X-linked conditions, it matters a great deal because typically one, but not both, of the mother's exes carries the trait. The SRY gene not only directs the embryo to grow a penis, it also directs hormone production that affects the brain, skeleton, body fat, muscles, and much else from the moment of conception to the last breath in old age, and influences that make for more sex differences than might be expected from an extremely small portion of the genome. Male-female variations. Partial gene deactivation. This happens when one half of a gene pair switches off completely, possibly causing a problem if the remaining gene is destructive. And parental imprinting can happen. This is when a specific variation is passed from mother or father to a child and can result in strange syndromes. Every now and then a baby is born with ambiguous genitals, meaning that the child's sex is not abundantly clear. When this happens, a quick analysis of chromosomes is needed to make sure there are exactly 46 and to see whether the 23rd pair is XY or XX. The karyotypes shown here indicate a normal baby left and girl right.
Opposing perspectives. Too many boys? Is sex selection the parents' right or a social wrong? There is a preference for boys in many areas of the world. There are ways to prevent female birth. Can inactivate the egg sperm before conception? In in vitro fertilization? Or you can abort certain fetuses? Let's see, my strength, my daughter. That's the slogan these girls in New Delhi are shouting at a demonstration against abortion of female fetuses in India. The current sex ratio of children in India suggests that this campaign has not yet convinced every couple meaning that they are aborting female fetuses in favor of male children. New cells, new people. Duplication and division begins within hours after conception. The 23 pairs of chromosomes carrying all the genes duplicate, forming two complete sets of the genome. Two sets move toward opposite sides of the zygote and the single cell splits neatly down the middle of, into the two cells, each containing the original genetic code. Two cells duplicate and divide, becoming four, which then duplicates and divides, becoming eight, and so on and so forth. The first stages of the germinal period. This is the original zygote as it divides into two cells, four cells, and eight cells. Occasionally, at this early stage, the cells separate completely, forming the beginning of monozygotic twins, quadruplets, or octuplets. Continuing with new cells, new people. At birth, the zygote becomes 10 trillion cells. Each cell carries a complete copy of genetic instructions. In the placenta, this allows for early genetic testing, and there are stem cells which result from early duplication and division and are able to produce any other cell. Lately you may have heard of something called CRISPR. This is a, a, a gene editing technique and it is forbidden for humans but they have used it to experiment on various animals to create clones. Assisted reproduction so in vitro fertilization, sperm is mixed with surgically removed ova and implanted the zygote into a woman's uterus. There are legal restrictions that exist in some countries. Birth defects and later illness increase slightly with IFV, or IVF, I'm sorry. In the United States, almost half of these babies are low birth weight twins or triplets. You all may not remember this person. She was once... Uh, commonly in the news cycle. Her name was Nadia Suleiman. She was a medical miracle when her eight newborns all survived thanks to expert care in an LA hospital. Soon thereafter, however, considerable controversy began. She was dubbed the Octo Mom because even though already a single mother of six children, including twins, she still opted to undergo in vitro fertilization, which resulted in implantation of her octuplets. People saw this as unnecessary and weren't quite sure why she was doing it. I'm not quite sure what the uproar was about. All right, now we're going to talk about twins. This is an important area for research as well. There are two types of twins. There's monozygotic and dizygotic. For monozygotic twins, they originate from one zygote that splits apart very early in development. An incomplete split results in conjoined twins. The same genotype with slight variations in phenotype are possible due to environmental influences. In dizygotic twins, it results from fertilization of two separate ova by two separate sperm. Dizygotic twins have half their genes in common and occur twice as often as monozygotic twins. The incidence is genetic and varies by ethnicity and age. All right, from genotype to phenotype. I mentioned this word earlier but didn't give a definition, so here we go. The phenotype is the observable characteristics of an organism, including appearance, personality, intelligence, and all other traits. Some traits are polygenic. 
This is a trait that is influenced by many genes. And some are multifactorial. This is a trait affected by many factors, genetic and environmental, that enhance, halt, shape, or alters the expression of genes, resulting in a phenotype that may differ remarkably from the genotype. Most traits are polygenic and multifactorial. Gene-gene interactions. I'm going to talk about heredity. There's additive heredity. These are genes that add something to some aspect of the phenotype. Many genes add up to influence some aspects such as height, partly dependent on all inherited genes. Then there's dominant and recessive heredity. Dominant genes are far more influential than are recessive genes, which are non-additive. Dominant genes can completely control the phenotype with no noticeable effect or recessive gene. The effect of recessive genes can sometimes be noticed. The chart here describes how the recessive gene for blue eyes can play out for children and parents that both have brown eyes but carry that trait. In this case, there is a 1 in 4 chance for a child to have blue eyes if both parents carry the blue eye color recessive gene. It's also specifically things that are passed from mother to son. They're called X-linked. The gene is located on the X chromosome, and females are only carriers of the gene, while males will exhibit the trait that is the result of that gene. Nature and nurture. And we'll discuss the alcohol use disorder, because it really shows how both nature and nurture can affect this. So there's no one gene involved. Many genes can create an addictive pull for alcohol. And inherited biochemistry affects alcohol metabolism. As I said, there is no single alcoholic gene, but alleles that make alcoholism more likely have been identified on every chromosome except the Y. Alcoholism is polygenic. It is influenced by many genes. And culture is piv pivotal. Uh, for example, all of the alcohol ads on TV that could influence a person to turn to drinking. This also occurs for nearsightedness. Age, genes, and culture affect vision. 75% heritability with particular population, context, and era. A culture can be devoid of certain nutrients in their diets that promote conditions, in this case, lack of vitamin A. Heritability indicates only how much of the variation in a particular trait within a particular population in a particular context and era. Chromosomal and genetic problems. Why study conditions caused by extra chromosome or single destructive genes? Well, they provide insight into the complexities of nature and nurture and knowing their origins can help limit their effects. And the information combats prejudice. The difference is not always a deficit. Spontaneous mut mutations. These are involved in many genetic and chromosomal problems and cannot be predicted in advance, in advance and are not likely to reappear in future embryos. They can be caused by the environment such as exposure to pollutants and radiation, which affects the sperm, ova, or zygote. They are influenced by age of mother and father, so it's more prevalent if the mother is over the age of 35 or if the father is over the age of 40. And sometimes it may be helpful, harmful, or harmless. Not exactly 46 in terms of survival. 99% of surviving fetuses have 46 chromosomes. For the remaining 1%, only one newborn in 166 births survives with 45, 47, or rarely, in some cases, 48 or 49 chromosomes. Survival is more common if only some cells have 47 chromosomes and others have 46. This is called mosaicism.
not exactly 46. Some gametes have more or fewer than 23 chromosomes. Sometimes only part of the 23rd chromosome is missing. Each abnormality leads to a recognizable syndrome, a cluster of distinct characteristics that tend to occur together. Usually the cause is three chromosomes, a condition called trisomy, at a particular location instead of the usual two. This results in what we know as Down syndrome. This is called technically trisomy 21 because the person has three copies of chromosome 21. It involves around 300 distinct characteristics from third chromosome and create unique individuals. Here in this picture is a fellow named Daniel. He has trisomy 21. And this photograph was taken at the only school in Chile where normal and special needs children share classrooms. Once in about every 200 births, a newborn survives with 45, 47, or as I mentioned, rarely 48 or 49 chromosomes. All right, this leads to dominant disorders. There are 7,000 known single gene disorders that are dominant. They are evident in the phenotype. They are rare because people rarely live long enough to reproduce which would then pass that gene on. There are exceptions. There is the Huntington disease, which is a fatal central nervous system disorder caused by genetic miscode of more than 35 repetitions of particular triplet. There's also a rare type of early onset before age 60, Alzheimer's disease. There are also recessive disorders, there are millions of different types, and lethal conditions are rare. Several types are sex-linked. There is the fragile X syndrome. This is caused by more than 200 repetitions of one triplet on one gene. This is the most common form of inherited mental retardation. There's also the sickle cell trait. It offers some protection against malaria and African carriers are more likely than non-carriers to survive. And there's cystic fibrosis. This is more common among people with Northern European ancestors, and carriers have been protected against cholera. There's also genetic counseling and testing. Genetic testing creates challenges and opportunities. Misinformation is especially destructive with psychological disorders. Prenatal genetic testing is not advocated by many scientists. Genetic counseling may help parents understand genetic risks involved. And this concludes Chapter 3 for Psychology 312.